to put that into perspective, um, the, the idea that you question the current strategy in terms of how you address slums. Our proposition was really uh, almost naively simple, and that is that the current strategy in the absence of the involvement of those professions concerned with design, the political mantra is you bulldoze them and start again, which has not worked. And the scale uh, of this issue is so large that it's, it's, it, it's, never, it's never going to work. The other idea is that, is that the, the slum is a place of despair and not a place of hope. And it was quite interesting, the insights from one project in India, Duravi. Uh, and just to put Duravi, where we started to get an insight into some of these issues with a small team. Um, if you can imagine a site which is half the area of Central Park and has two-thirds of the population of Manhattan. Uh, Manhattan is 1.6 million. And this site here in Duravi, and that's the same uh, outline, is one million people. And um, that view cone there is pointing towards some new buildings. The new buildings were in an area which had been bulldozed. And new buildings, as an answer, you can see ring there, those new buildings in the background. And the team exploring that looking at the, uh, the bulldoze site and the recreated 14-story buildings. These are the only buildings which have modern sanitation. And they were completely empty, abandoned, unused. The space at the bottom we, was used for cricket by the, uh, by the children in the, in the community. And, um, and here you can see the team ringed. And they're having tea with the community leaders and they're asking the question, I mean, those buildings are empty, the site was bulldozed, why are they not in use? And the answer was discovered just through seeing the economy uh, and the needs, the physical needs of that community, who essentially process something like 80% of the waste of, of Mumbai. And the kind of accommodation that they need is essentially layered. It could not work. They could not sustain economically their life in those, those new buildings. So the, the idea that this is a poor community most certainly is, but in relevant, in, 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 if, if you relate it back to the agricultural uh, community from which they fled, then it's moving into an area of affluence. And there are all kinds of uh, side stories on this, the way in which they uh, bring together uh, teachers from the state uh, system and essentially create a private form of education. And you see kids immaculately dressed with ties and really quite extraordinary. So that led to the proposition that if you reduced at key points, the density, you could thread an infrastructure of services and you could regenerate those communities from within. It's at this point, relatively recently, and this is going back uh, about a little over a year, and coming together here uh, around this table in the foundation. And the foundation is in every sense completely separate from the practice. So uh, I'm re really wearing two hats. I'm the common denominator between the work of the foundation, which generates out globally from Madrid, and the headquarters of the practice, which is in London. So they're separate in, in every sense. And this around the table uh, is the coming together with MIT to look at some of these issues and the application longer term of, of, of technology. And um, along the way, this was one proposition that I made to reduce the energy demands uh, a heart unit, which was generated by the needs of a slum, but like anything that would address the issues of a slum, 
would have a spin-off into the formal city, so it would improve the quality of life. So, for example, if you could compress, if all the elements um, in a house, the heating, the cooling, the refrigerator, uh, the, the bathroom, the, the, the storage, if those could holistically talk to each other and compress into a much smaller unit, then whether that was addressing the issue in a slum or creating more affordable housing or creating in luxury housing terms less space occupied by certain elements. And in that proposition, I invoked the, uh, in India the technology of the, what was then the most affordable car at the time. This is going back some years. It's Tata uh, Nano. And um, I met... Uh, Ratan Tata, uh, one of the key family members behind this great kind of manufacturing empire in India, and I shared these ideas for his opinion, and he was totally supportive. And I said something like, what if we could try on a pilot project? Uh, how could you help? And he said, well, f first you'd need a, a smaller slum so you could work uh, more directly with the group and also you would need to find a community which had a sympathetic um, civic leader, um, a politician who really believed in it, it wasn't corrupt. And, um, and so that was, we th it was a very nice meeting um, and the foundation is meanwhile working on these issues and then it's about must have been about after that meeting, two years, three years, and I got a phone call from Ratan Tata and he said, I shared your ideas with a politician who is the chief minister of one of the poorest states in, in India, Odisha, has a major slum project. He um, was totally uh, enthusiastic. What's followed from that is the uh, land rights to slum dwellers, which enables them then to start with a bank loan and so on. So he said, there's a big ceremony handing out certificates in three weeks' time, can you come? And this was last year. And, um, and so that led to this meeting here. On the right-hand side is the newspaper of that time, which is the theme of the proposition, that instead of evicting and bulldozing, you empower them and you regenerate from within. And there's the chief minister, Ratan Tata, in, in the center and myself and we started with a slum uh, community uh, Sahi Baba um, uh, in, um, uh, in Odisha and, um, and we met with the community and the community to our surprise had prepared a presentation in the foreground is a drone photograph of their community and in that sense the drone technology made possible the mapping in the background is something that they prepared in the foreground in the back of that image there's a swamp you won't recognize it but they produced their vision map and this fascinating when we questioned and challenged them on this uh, it's just a really serious piece of design. For example, in the heart of it, they wanted a cyclone shelter. And the, the promise was, if we had a cyclone shelter, then we wouldn't have to leave our community in the event of a, a cyclone. We would be here in place to you know, guard our property. Uh, and I said something like this landscaping at the bottom here, uh, around the, uh, oh yes, if we increase the landscaping there, then that's the direction that the storms come from. So it would modify our climate. And at the top is a playground. So they said, of course, if you drained the swamp there, then we would have space. So, um, and at this point I said, you know, who are the architects? And these are the architects. Uh, and amazing, amazing piece of design. That led on to a number of projects. These are really early days. We haven't been active on these projects now, not for a year, almost a year. Um, so we're looking at another settlement called Neuhus uh, Sahi, uh, and that is um, just a few facts about the extreme weather there and the effects of that weather on 
the kind of structures and the way in which a more robust structure has withstood that cyclone. I should say that these, all the images I'm showing here are taken by our team. We have a team which is now resident there, working with these uh, communities and liaising with the project uh, group in the foundation uh, in Madrid with a kind of backwards and forwards um, movement. We sent questionnaires out in advance of our visits to these different communities. And interestingly, uh, the one on the left is, what would you like your community have? The one on the right is, what would you like your family to have? And uh, out of these various questionnaires, you know, the first thing is a roof, a roof that doesn't leak. The second are the walls. In terms of the community, it's about water uh, first. Um, and in another survey, once they got past this, the next stage was what's, what, what's next, and that's a job and education. So uh, it's been a fascinating insight. This is the aerial view of this community on the water with the beach. And if you, you can see, again, this community, like the first one, has a swamp at the back. And that gave the clue, if you drained it, for the way in which you could reduce the density, manipulate, create a degree of public space and address some of the major issues in this community. Um, trying to condense one year into a few, few minutes, um, the idea is to produce a scalable model, something that we can document the clues were given from that first community where they were using a vision map. So visually literate and able in a very sophisticated way to understand two-dimensionally major design issues. And so as a pilot project which would enable others, producing a manual films, enable others to, to spread the effect of these studies and working with the, with the different groups individually. And finally, that is the master plan. And what happens is you can see that the swamp has become reclaimed land and there are very, very clearly defined routes. And each of those different groups and the women, again, were very, very powerful in terms of design and involvement. And they were responsible for the cross routes, the cross routes which would deliver security and access to a far wider range of, of, of homes. Here you can see recognizably in the background the master plan. And, and the next image is the approval of that master plan. Work on the ground has started, but it is somewhat painful in a way because coming to the premise of what Kent was summarizing, you realize the inadequacy in these conditions uh, of, of the mega grid, the big power station, uh, the massive amount of excavation with pipes. This is the start of a toilet block in that community, a part of the master plan now under construction. Um, and leads to the proposition of what if, what if in a community like this you could be autonomous, you could plant a box, deliver power,